What's up, everyone, and thanks for watching or listening to the Wake Before the Day podcast. And Bobby and I have some exciting news for you today. Today is the 100th podcast, and it is amazing. It's crazy. Time has flown. We kicked around the idea of doing a podcast in the past, and then when COVID hit, we're like, we have to find ways to interact with the church, and yeah. it's been fun for us. This yeah. has been good. We learned a lot. I don't know anything about technology. But learn We're learning a lot about that too. Plug in a microphone and download <laughs> stuff and edit. You know, it's it's been fun. Yeah, it's been fun. So, thank you for listening. We, to begin the time, we're gonna talk and share a little bit about kind of the heart behind it, mm -hmm. what we're learning, what we've heard from people, and just a few of the analytics that we just celebrate God's using it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah really. When we started, it was kind of this process of um, how do we stay connected, like Clark said, but really. Um, how do we encourage folks just to be able to share what they're reading in their Bible um, in a in an easy way, in a comfortable way uh, with their kids, with their spouse, with their yeah. apartment roommate? Um, you know, sometimes we think we overthink and there needs to be some kind of big moment where we think, oh, wow, I really met the Lord in this way. And that happens. Yeah. But a lot of times it's just normal, you know what? natural, mundane. Yeah. This verse stuck out to me. This right. is what I liked. There's a little reminder. There's yeah. an encouragement. And so, honestly, Emmanuel Church has done this. Um, read it, write it, pray it, share it. Um, what would you call that? Like motto? We've had yeah. this motto. Slogan, mantra. And um, for some time yeah. now. And yeah, so yeah. we just felt that's an easy way we can step in and really just encourage folks, hey, we're with you. We got our four kids and we're trying to do <laughs> one chapter a day. And, and you can hear them too in the podcast. I mean, that's <laughs> we've heard from people. The highlights are often Kirby's benediction and doxology at the end. And, yeah. and listening to the normalcy of yeah. um, Baby the grind. podcast. Yeah, you usually hear some kids slip. <laughs> Bam! Ah, like just crying in the background, and that evidently does people's heart good because I mean, our hope is that again, you just see, our house is pretty chaotic sometimes, mm -hmm. and we're still mm -hmm. trying our best to read the Bible, talk to our kids, speak to each other about yeah. it. And you can do it. So yeah. we we got some cool analytics back. Yeah. And, and honestly, we don't really care a lot about the analytics. That's not a motivation for why we're doing this. And it, it took us to like we got to the 80th podcast to even find out that we could see some of the analytics. Well, it's, sometimes it's like, oh, people are listening. Yeah, like 80 yeah. podcasts, 85. Like, yeah, whoa, I mean, thank COVID you, Lord. being distant, we're not communicating with everyone, so I have, we have no idea. But <laughs> how it works is the the um, analytics come back, and we got maybe 10 percent of our analytics back because people listen through the church app and the website on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher. Google Podcast, all these different things. So we got analytics back just from the Spotify account. And it was pretty cool to see what God's doing. And yeah. it's been listened to in over 80 countries. Um, or sorry, 30 countries and like 80 major cities. Uh, so I, my, when I first saw that, I was like, this has to be wrong. Like refresh, refresh. And <laughs> Is that all our family? Do we yeah, know family we have, in 80 cities? Do we have family in Croatia and <laughs> South Korea? I don't think so. Um, so again, that's just humbling because one, I, I think this is... Again, when it comes to like trying to put on a show, a, a, a very unattractive podcast in the sense that it's not like, we're not putting on a show. It's just us crying kids in the background, but it's yeah. all about God's word. And yeah. like, hey, you can have these conversations. So our, we're blessed to hear that many people are listening to this, probably more than we know. And we just want you to have these conversations, read the Bible, yeah. keep it going. And so we were told from some of the team here at Emmanuel that are doing the analytics is that if you do put a review or you subscribe, um, that actually helps like the message go wider to a wider reach. And so, if you want to do that and you haven't already, you could subscribe to yeah. one of those places. But, um, anyways, it's it's been it's fun. It's been a journey, so we'll keep it's it so going. Fun. One of the dreams yeah. we do have going forward is we're working on some classes that we want to write and teach probably in 2021 at some point, and offsetting maybe a Tuesday and or a Thursday podcast from time to time to coincide with whatever class just extra you want. Just extra yeah. learning. Just extra learning. So that's kind of where we're at. 100th yeah. podcast. Crazy. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're looking ahead knowing that God will keep using it for whatever yeah. he wants to do. So mm -hmm. now you want to transition to Ephesians 5? Yeah. So today we're in Ephesians 5 and we're just going to share a little bit about what stuck out from us and like we usually do, what we're learning about God, what we learned about ourselves and really just how, yeah, um, yeah how how good he is. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So Ephesians 5, what... what uh, 
I don't know, what did we say? Well, really, the first couple of verses here. So I'll go ahead and read the first couple of verses. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Honestly, I don't know if we need to go much farther than that. That's kind of where I spent a lot of my time (laughs) just wrestling with that. Like, what does it mean to be an imitator of God? Yeah. Yeah, write that. And that's something, too, like, before we even got to, like, how are we imitating, how can we imitate Christ? It was like, well, first, let's understand. First, let's understand what Jesus has done. And that's actually a little bit of what Ephesians is saying, too. Um, Recognize um, Christ's love and how he, as Christ loved us and gave himself up. And so, really, before we can imitate, let's understand that. And then also just the, the Greek definition, love has... You know, I think, is it five words? Yeah, it's got many it? different words and definitions. Phileo. So, so there's all these different words. But the, yeah. um, when it comes to, like, the uh, heavenly love, we often talk about agape. And then the Greek word, how that literally means to will the good of another. Yeah. And so just kind of before we even got to practically speaking, how can we do this? Like, how are we being imitators? Yeah. Let's understand first that you're loved by Jesus Christ who came to the cross from heaven to die to be raised again. So let's understand that a little bit. Yeah. Selfless, sacrificial. Yeah. Like and that's so, a biblical definition of love. Yeah. Yeah. And then good. what were we kind of saying? Like, well, what that, does that look like? Yeah. After that, we're just asking ourselves really simply. So then what does it look like for us to be imitators of God and to be loving right. in, in life? And so we started running through these examples of Jesus and like mm-hmm. uh, examples of, uh, of his life that we need to imitate because he's perfectly lived this out. And, and so one of the things that came to our mind was that Jesus had hard conversations. And it was actually yeah. because he loved people, he entered into those. Mm-hmm. Think about talk, talking to Peter, like, hey, dude, you're going to betray me. We've been <laughs> like best buds for a couple of years now. You're going to betray like, who? That's a hard conversation. Oh, yeah. And then it, it comes full circle to a, a restoration and yeah. bringing Peter back in. But Jesus entered and talking to the disciples and, and confronting the, the Pharisees having hard conversations. Mm-hmm. Like, what does it look like for us to imitate Jesus and speak in love when people are unjust and when mm-hmm. people are speaking incorrectly, when people when people are harming someone else? Yeah. Imitate God and be an instrument of his love. Like, mm-hmm. there's one example. Yeah. Um, what was another one we had? We talked about, let's see, how just the, the nature of Jesus' ministry, how it was literally the most inclusive, welcoming thing. Like yeah. he had friends from every background and every occupation, and mm-hmm. it was controversial at times because, oh, yeah. you know, whoa, this, this is so new and crazy. And so we were talked about Mary and just Mary, number one, being a woman. But also number two, um, had a bunch of demon has, had at some point in time. was demon possessed. Yeah, and so it's like okay. Um, but what's interesting about those relationships is that they're um, called to him, they're welcomed in, and then in walking in step and relationship because of his love, they're yeah. transformed. Yeah, and so that was. So there's a, the huge. age old saying, "Come as you are, but you can't stay as you are. We can't stay as we are. We walk with Jesus. Yeah. We're going with him." And how does what does it look like for us to imitate that today mm-hmm. in such mm-hmm. a polarizing time? Mm-hmm. Um, so we have welcoming each other, praying for other people. Jesus was always yeah. praying and going off to solitary places in the mountainside. That can be an incredible act of love to dedicate 30 seconds or a couple of minutes to say, I'm going to pray for my friend yeah. or this person who needs healing or this person who's far off. Mm-hmm. That's the way we can imitate God and his love. Yeah, and actually to go a step further right now in this conversation, I feel like that's something that Christian people would often say is a, like that's maybe even Christianese language is, you know, we're talking and then we end with, you know, I'll be praying for you. Yeah. And so I just want to encourage you, do it, number yeah. one, pray for them. But then even if there's a, a moment in time where it's actually um, allowing you to pray with them right there, yeah, do that. Yeah. Um, set a reminder in your phone, literally a reminder or 2 PM for the next three weeks yeah, or whatever it is. Good. And then follow up. Like if yeah. it's, Hey, I just want to let you know. Um, I feel like those are ways like in love we're actually, yeah. like you said, with the hard conversations and that kind of thing too, where it, where there's meat and substance to, you know, yeah. these words that we're saying. For sure. So, so I think, you know, as we wrap up today, oops, as we wrap up today, I think we would say, you know, what does it look like for us and for you listening or watching to be an imitators of God's love? Mm-hmm. And think back through some of your favorite stories of Jesus and what was he doing? And what does it look like for us to receive his love and then implement that in our life right now? 
the rest of Ephesians 5, it talks to the marriage, but also light yeah. and darkness and being a person who lives in the light. Step out of the darkness, live in the light, and we'll experience that. And it's an incredible gift. So yeah. I think that's all we have for you today from yeah. Ephesians 5. Again, 100th episode, okay. <laughs> crazy. Thanks for listening and watching. Um, again, if you want to subscribe or click, uh, fill out some kind of review, we'll help the word go and get more people reading the word. So God bless you and have a great week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Have a great day.